Um, so one thing that we thought would be very helpful to talk about, especially with so many new people here, was code review. So this is a presentation that we, some of you might know. I think I gave it in like May of 2021. Uh, but that was about half the team um, and now we're double in size and i think this is a really really important um, practice and, and kind of it was novel and, and useful to the team then so i suspect it's going to be useful to the team now um, and, and and so code reviews best practices what i'm going to try to go through is why do we do code reviews how to write a good code review um, how, to, how to write a good pr and then how to give a good code review to that pr um, why do we do code reviews? There are two main goals in code reviews. One is to catch defects. Um, these are bugs, performance issues, things that are wrong with the code, problems in the code. Two, and, and, and these are specifically in priority order. Now, the, the secondary goal is to maintain a clean code base that's easy to work with. And so these goes to things like readability, the naming functions, naming variables, where the code is, what each function actually does, comments, things like that. Um, what's also important to point out what's not to be done in code reviews, architectural discussions, fundamental decision-making. If you find yourself commenting on that in the code review, or if you put a code review up and you find that other people comment on that and start kind of pushing back and forth on um, fundamental decision-making, one, probably the code review is not the right forum to make the decision. It's probably a sign that either not enough thinking has been put into the, the kind of design doc or that the other person is not aware of that design doc. But decision making should be made in design docs and outside of a code review. By the time you write code, you should kind of know what you're doing. Um, why does this work? A second pair of eyes um, is these things that you don't. Um, and then also external reviewers keep you honest, right? Like we're all, I know that when I code by myself, I tend to potentially cut corners. I don't always do the right things. And so having a second pair of eyes on things will just keep me honest about things that I know I should do. Maybe I need to write some extra tests. Maybe I need to refactor a method that I'm kind of like not in the mood to refactor today, but is really the good thing to do. So keeping be, keep somebody else to keep you honest uh, on that stuff is very, very, very helpful. Um, so two things, one, the author side of code reviews, what makes a good pull request? Uh, high level explanation, right? So the description of what the pull request is about is important. Um, context for the reviewer of what the core of the PR is, right? What, what is this really about, right? Like if I see a pull request that doesn't explain what is really the key thing in it, why is this here? What should be paid attention to, what not? It's very difficult to kind of track that through the code review. It makes it much easier when somebody just points you in the right direction. Screenshots are good if it's a new feature or user facing stuff. Um, and so the more you can kind of give some context to the code review, what is the tricky piece of code? What is the important decision there? What are things that are not to be looked at right now or to do's will help the code reviewer interpret that and point them at the right place. Um, ideal code reviews are under 500 lines. Um, the reason for that, which you all probably know, is they're quicker to review. Uh, ultimately, they're easier to find defects in. You know, don't forget the core tenant of why we do code reviews is to find defects. Um, they're, they're easier to just find your way around or like trying to do a 3000 line code review just takes a day. Like I, I, it's, you have to read a lot of code, you have to process a lot of code, you end up focusing on things that are not the core of it, you miss things in it, it's just just not a good idea. Now, they're also quicker to merge, right? Like a 3000 line code review is gonna take you two weeks to merge because you can have a million comments to it and back and forth versus a, a, a short code review will also make it into the code base quicker, less merge uh, merge conflicts, less migration conflicts, it's gonna be tested quicker, it's just much more beneficial. Um, an important kind of commentary here, I think you know, sometimes people push back on not being able to split PRs in, 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 in under 500 lines. Um, I'd say the, the one thing that I've found over time to be helpful to do this kind of vertical development, not horizontal development, so, and this picture kind of is 
pulled from product management, but I think it applies to code reviews and code. Um, you know, writing a skeleton that makes some, you know, silly view and silly model and some glue that ties them together is like your quickest thing that actually works is the skateboard. And then you kind of can start adding things on it versus if you build the models first, it's just a wheel that doesn't do anything. It doesn't quite tie together. And there's a lot of benefits to doing it um, in like building the skateboard and the scooter and the bicycle first. Uh, versus like wheel, wheel and tying them together. It just don't fit as well and you'll find yourself rewriting a lot of code. And so it's okay to check in code that has a lot of to-dos. It's okay to check in code that's under feature flags that doesn't quite do the right thing. Um, and, and it's important here, and I've also seen this over and over, do not, if I, whenever you see somebody say, I will refactor this later, it's a pretty clear sign that they will never be refactored or the odds of it being refactored are very small. Code that gets checked in has this weird habit of just being checked in and assumed correct as much as you want the intent, unless it's the immediate next pull request and, and you're like super committed to it. I'd rather say, no, don't do that refactor it now. There's no refactoring later. Right? Like once it's in, people just assume it's fine. Some other priority shows up, some code red shows up, and then the code is there, and then some other people copy it because you know we kind of do copy-paste development in times, and then that just made it the code base, and now it's part of it. Um, and so don't do that. It's not a great idea. Um, on the reviewer side, what makes a good code review? Um, I, I think it's very important, and I put it in red here, to, to understand that as a code reviewer, you are as responsible for the code as the person that write, wrote it. So when you code review code, think of yourself that way. If that person goes on vacation for two weeks, you might be asked to find the bug in their code, right? And, and you should know and understand what it does almost as well as the person that wrote it and really ask if you don't understand it that well. Try, try to dig into it. What happened here? Why are you writing it this way? What are the defects in it? What should this do? And, and internalize it on your side. It does take time, but it's very helpful time spent because of the two reasons up top. Our goal is to find defects in here. If you only look at naming functions, you're not gonna find defects and bugs. If you only look at how like superficially the code looks and it's pretty or comments, you're not gonna find the actual bugs in it, the actual issues in it. And so you are as responsible as that person. The, the more you are in this mindset, the better you're gonna be. And this is the mindset that we want to encourage and you want to have when you're a code reviewer. And so before starting, this is why the context that the person writes um, for the pull request is important. Try to understand the context of the PR. What is this about? What is the person writing it trying to do? What is the dis description? What, what, what's the thing here? Explain, document, ask the, the writer for, for, for that explanation if it's not there understand what's important and what's not. There's some core to all of the PR that was put together. What is that tricky piece? What is the piece that you should pay attention to? Um, what, 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 what should you really, really dig into? I try to understand that. Um, and this is, goes back to the goal, what to watch for. Code defects, test coverage, because that also goes to defects. Did you cover all the cases? Did you add all the tests? Should you add more tests? Is it useful to add more tests? Um, don't be afraid to call people out for that. We have really good test coverage. We should continue to maintain that. And, and it, yes, it does take time. Yes, the staging cut is tomorrow, but you'd rather have those tests and plan for it because if you don't, it's not gonna play out very well. And third, code readability. Um, naming is the hardest problem in computer science. That's, that's a true statement. It's really does, that's hard um, and important, right? Like we read code way more than we write. If you really want to annoy the author, you can also comment on nitpicky stuff like spacing, whatever, and, and, and you can, but generally a good idea if you say, hey, this is a nitpick, I, I don't really, you can leave it as such. Um, these are in order priority about what is important in a code review. You need to watch for defects and test coverage first, then comment on readability, then comment on nitpicky stuff. Um, some other good practices around code reviews. Um, PRs approved with no comments are just both a bad practice and a bad sign. If I ever write a PR and somebody just approves it, um, I almost certainly know that they have not looked at it. Uh, they, there's no way that I write it, unless it's a you know 10 line code review. 
um, unless it's super trivial. There's no way there's nothing there to ask or comment or address. And so I think this is just generally a, a, a smell of, hey, what, something did not, you have, you can't just, just rubber stamp things. Um, there's some people um, that, that just think that they know things. I have that tendency sometimes too, especially in code reviews, like why was this this way? It's good to catch yourself in that if you're in that mindset of, of, of hey, what, what happened here? This is wrong, right? Like, I know that this is wrong. Um, and just ask, right? Like, hey, what, why was this? Um, why did you make this choice? Like, I don't understand this enough. I, I, maybe I'm, you know, I think I, I think this is wrong, but maybe I'm not understanding something. I think that's a useful perspective to be kind of kind and gentle and assume positive intent, and assume correctness on the other side. And not assume that, that the author of the PR was just straight out wrong. Um, when you ask for a change, always helpful to give context about why you believe that change is good. Uh, hey, we should move this function here because, in general, we try to unify all of our uh, methods around this into this one class, and they're easy to find. Right? It's kind of a, a good thing to add the extra meta. Why are you kind of asking for that? Um, it, it kind of helps. I mean, it depends on your relationship with the, the person, with the author. It depends on how you know, how well you know that they know these things. Like, you know, sometimes you, you know, judgment call, but it's generally a good idea to try to explain versus just asking for things. And on the other hand, if you're asked for things that you think are kind of unusual or you don't agree with, just ask, like, why, why is that a good idea? Like, why should I do that? Like, why do you think this name is better? Or why should we move it there? If there's no context and you don't agree with it. Um, don't forget to comment on good things as well in pull requests. I think this is also something uh, worth highlighting. If the person that wrote the code did add good test coverage, good to say that. Uh, thank you for adding such great test coverage. Um, if they, the code is unusually clean or really good comments, I find really good comments to be very helpful. I know that I generally comment on that when I see them really well written and like really well explained. And then, then I'll say, well, th thank you. That's really helpful, actually. It helps me understand this, this code review better. So, so don't hesitate to do that. Um, and then state what's a blocker comment and what's a nice to have, right? Like if something is really like, no, this I really think this is important to address, worth stating, hey, this is really important. I think this is a blocker for me. Or, yeah, you could make these comments better. I just wanted to leave that comment here, but I don't think it's that critical. I'm not going to block you on um, this thing if, if you want to merge it this way. If you're in a rush, that's fine. Um, and last tip and trick, uh, you know, I, I generally, and maybe this is too nit nitpicky for my side, um, I generally tend to prefer to start a review and then make all of my comments and drafts and then submit the review. Um, I think GitHub makes it easy to just add comments one by one. That spams my email whenever I, I need to code review somebody's code. I never know when they're done reviewing my code, if that's the case, right? Like, when are you done with it? Because I keep seeing these emails come by every three minutes. Do I wait? Do I not? Is it ready? Is it not? I'm not sure. And so just starting a review both allows me to see all my comments. If I've made a comment that's just a draft that maybe is incorrect, I can, as I read the review, I can kind of go back and edit them and make sure that they're correct. And then I can send them all at once. And then the other person knows that I'm done with my code review or my response to their review. And then that makes the back and forth easier than kind of this one by one. Are you done? Are you not done? If you only have time to comment on one thing, highlight that. Hey, I don't, I only have 15 minutes now. I couldn't review the whole thing. But I looked at this one thing and, and that's the only thing that I looked at. So you're aware maybe somebody else can review it. Um, but I left a comment on this. I'll take time to review anything else. That's also reasonable to state as you do a code review. Um, and um, there's some other tricks I think Joel was pointing out, you know, use the assignee field to know. I think this probably depends on each of the squads, um, um, maybe, and how you guys kind of think about who does the review or not, and how you kind of organize who should be CC'd or not almost on this review. Um, and, and maybe my other last tip here is, I tend to use Gmail heavily, and I use Gmail to keep track of code reviews. Um, I know some other people prefer Slack. Uh, maybe this is also a personal preference, and however you want to best organize your time and, and kind of your processing of information. Um, any questions? We have one more minute, um, but um, maybe we have time for one or two questions if there are any.